Hi, everybody. I'm Tiana Roebuck from the Art Gallery of Ontario, and welcome to AGO from Home. Um, I'm the Associate Curator of Studio Learning and Programming, and even though we are coming to you from home today, um, I want to acknowledge that the Art Gallery of Ontario operates on land that is the territory of the Anishinaabe, Mississauga Nation, and also the territory of the Wendat and the Haudenosaunee. Today, I'm so excited. I'm here with the awesome artist Annie Castillo. Um, this is part of our AGO Make Summer Edition program. It's a four-week program. It's all free. It's all on our website, and this is week one. Um, we're bringing you exciting art projects, activities, demonstrations, all kinds of great things that you're going to love to do and enjoy. And essentially, we want to get you connected to art this summer, and we want to get you connected to our collection this summer to learn more about the AGO. So this week's theme is play. Uh, we're not just going to make art, we're going to play with it. And again, our special guest who's with us today is Annie Castillo. I'm so excited for her to be here. She's going to show us some great uh, drawing demonstrations and show us how to play with shapes and how to create characters. Um, so I feel like that's enough of a preamble, Annie. Let's just get started. So <laughs> I'm going to yes. do a quick <laughs> line or two about you and then, and then let's go. Let's hear more about you. Let's get into a demonstration, all that good stuff. So um, Annie, who is amazing, is a multidisciplinary artist and cartoonist from Guadalajara, Mexico. Um, she's made Canada her home since 2006. Uh, I know Annie because of her incredible work with the AGO's Youth Council. Um, a few years ago, they did this great collaborative piece called uh, This Mountain Loves You, and I think she's going to show you some pictures in a little bit. Yeah. Um, she's also worked with us as a cartooning teacher. We're so, so lucky um, for our weekend courses, our children and youth courses, and also our summer camps. Uh, one of my favorite principles about Annie and teaching and why I love working with her is uh, she sort of says that what we need is already deep sort of inside ourselves, and we just have to listen to our own inner voice, which I think is a beautiful uh, principle for making art. So. Annie, I would love um, for you to introduce yourself and maybe tell us more about uh, what you do. Hi there, my friends. It's so nice to see you this morning. And I, yes, my name is Annie Castillo. I would like to show you a little, a couple of illustrations that I brought with me to explain a little bit about how play plays in my life as an artist. And I'm going to show you a little bit of uh, my story as an artist, how I became an artist and how you can do the same thing. It's really fun. It's like playing with life pretty much. So I'm going to share with you. This is me as a baby being born in Mexico with, I had a little brother who wasn't very happy about my arrival, but then he learned about loving me. I used to draw since I was really, really little and I used to find little shapes in the letters and I was really unpopular with my teachers because of that. I used to draw all the time and then my dad started taking me to painting lessons when I was six years old. He used to take me his bike in Mexico. And then I just grew up drawing. Like it was like an obsession that I always had and it was really special for me. For me, drawing is a way to play with my thoughts and with my imagination and also to understand the world better. But then as a teenager, I found the internet. So that was like explosion because then I found a way to put my work out there into the world. And that was magical because up until that time, I could, I could only draw from my house. So when I, when I started putting my work in the internet, I got offered a job as a cartoonist in the newspaper in Mexico, that it was called Pupa and Lavinia. These are the main characters. And it ran for 10 years and it was really popular in my city. I made 500 of those cartoons and I made a lot of friends because of that. But then I left Mexico and I came to Canada and I started, my illustrations became like really like very detailed and very about like love. And I, I, I feel like I feel a little bit lonely to be here, honestly, because I see all these illustrations are about like a protector and somebody to like hug me and protect me from something from probably the isolation that I felt after moving to Canada. But it was really detailed. At some point though, I became really obsessed about creating characters. And if you see the little characters here, they're like all very different. Each one is a different soul. You can see their little spirits, they're all so different. And I got obsessed about it. You can see like that everyone has like this expression and their little faces and different shapes. And then what are your characters going to say? Like I started writing what my characters were going to say. Most people are actually nice. Like really th little things that I was discovering about life. People are not doing things to you. People are just doing things. 
even if I'm scared. That's when like I'm really obsessed about. Like even if you're scared, you're like you can put yourself out there into the world. I choose to live within the magic. Big hopes. Love you anyway. I wanna fight this fight. As I say, like, darling, you gotta be brave. If you started merging my illustration with my writing, don't worry. People often reject awesome. So my friend, if you've ever gotten rejected, don't worry because people sometimes reject awesome. A sincere apology to all victims of my social awkwardness. That's me. I Can also I that one's me too. I love that one. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes, I think it applies to so many of us. Sorry for all good. victims. I also want peace. You can also speak uh, through like a playful drawing way and lettering about things that are super important and super deep. Everybody wants peace and it's good to remember that. Where are you from? Earth. Equality. Dear body, thank you for everything you do for me. Beneath all clothes, a fellow human. Beneath all skin, a fellow soul. And then after you put like these messages into your art, there's ways to bring it out into the world too. I started showing in galleries, but then I wanted to bring art to the outside world, to everybody. I wanted to have to make art that everybody could see. So I started doing street art before they demolished Honest Ed. So I put like this big installation of like 80 pieces. It was like an entire gallery and it got into the press and everything and it was really exciting. I worked for the Toronto Star as a cartoonist. I worked for Metro as a cartoonist. And I even got like some covers that they went nationally. And as I say, they were always having a very important message. Like this one was when everything was getting the, the American elections, everything was getting like really hairy and ugly and difficult and I say let's fight to keep the Canadian spirit alive and then I wanted like equality and diversity and acceptance of everybody and then at some point I, I got invited by the AGO to work with the youth council and we made this huge mountain that we call this mountain loves you and the idea was to make a gigantic art piece that it will have a very meaningful message for the people who saw it and that they felt loved and accepted when they read it, they support it. Let things go, trust in your abilities, speak your own language. This one I love, going to therapy is so freaking sweet. <laughs> Boys, you can cry. Like all of these beautiful things that the Youth Council wrote, like they really touched my heart and hopefully they touched the hearts of all the people who saw this because it was in Walker Court, so it was a big deal. And then after this, I made this piece that it shows you the power of cartooning. To me, this is the power of cartooning, that you can make a very simple illustration and then a very simple message, and it can have so much impact. This specific illustration, is it was inspired by COVID and being isolated from our families. So it, would put, it was put into billboards all around Toronto, like this one was the exhibition place and in like a little bus. This is by the Bentway. That, that art uh, institution. And this is like in front of the Eaton Center, we will meet again. So this was a collaboration with different artists. And this is really meaningful to me because that's one that I've, I felt with my heart. Like we, want, we will meet again. That's what I hope that we can all meet again with my family in Mexico and everything. So this is really important to me that it was out there. And then this is another step, making a book is like making a giant cartoon. So at some point I made my book thing and it got, it, got trans, it got made last year. It was published, yes, in New York last year. This is with two different backgrounds, see? Very impactful. So this is me signing at the Indigo. And this is like in one of the book fairs. So it's been translated to six different languages now. It's all around the world, Pink. But I want, what I wanted to show you is how I designed the character of Pink because that's what I'm gonna teach you today. And if you see Pink, it's just like a collection of shapes that I was just seeing around the world and how I was extremely obsessed about making like a square face. And this is the original design of Pink. Originally, he had like a tub of hummus. <laughs> that was his accessory, a hummus tub. But then I, I switched it to a paddle. So, and it used to be green, but then I switched it to red. But this, you can see how it was like a square and how the shape was changing. I wanted to make it like a little mango shape. I was obsessed about the square and the mango. So that's how pink came to be. And then I created pink. And that's exactly what we're gonna teach you about today, my friends, in a little bit. 
So I'm going to stop sharing the screen. Ah, wow. Thanks oh. so much, Annie, for showing us all of that. That was incredible. It's amazing to see all of your work and your journey sort of in one, you know, strand like that. Um, I will say for myself, when you uh, told me about the book Ping, I feel like I saw it back when it was in the pages before it became a book and I got to read through it. Um, my favorite thing was just the philosophy about the book. So I love the book for children, but I've also given it to adults too as gifts. And to me, I'm going to sum up the philosophy. Essentially, it's using the game of ping pong. So the idea of playing ping and pong, sending things back and forth as a metaphor for how you have to be brave and take chances and put things out in the world sort of yes. regardless of what you're going to get back. You can't control what you're going to get back. Exactly, I, exactly. Yeah, that's what it is. The, the first sentence is, my friend, in this life, we can only ping. The pong belongs to the other. We can only ping. The pong belongs to the person who, or like whatever is going to respond to us. We can only put the energy out there. That's our, that's our job. The other, whatever happens after that is not our job. And we don't need to worry about that. We're free. We're free to ping. Yeah. And I thought this week with um, the HEO Make Summer Edition with our theme being play, that it was so perfect to have you here, to have you talk about Ping. And I know you mentioned um, it's been published in six languages. It's been on the New York Times, you know, book review list. It was one of the CBC's best books of um, 2019. So yeah, highly, highly recommend it. I read it all the time. Um, it's <laughs> lovely. Um, but I will say that my favorite part was that idea of Ping and play. And I know you wanted to show us a little bit about how to create um, characters just by playing with the world around you, whether it's looking yes. at shapes or looking at different things. So maybe if you want to tell us a little bit more about that, that would be great. So yeah, this is right now, Danny is helping us in the back here like of the back of the shop. He's going to play a video for us. So <laughs> <laughs> like the, the idea that I, that I've been sharing with all my students when I teach at the AGO or like when I teach my children, even what I tell them is that they are characters all over the world. If you pay attention to the world, like, oh, right now, there's a video. Thank you, Danny. So what, I, what we see here, for example, it's a, this is like a little knob in one of my chest drawers. And you can see how you can find a little character out of it. You can see in the world, like, look at that, like a planter. And if you have a face, it's already, already made in the world. Look at this humidifier that I love so much. Or like, you can like find a little face out of it and then you can just add teeth. So there is characters all around you if you pay attention. And they're just so much fun to see. The world becomes like this place that you can find so many little friends if you pay a little bit more attention around you. And for, for this exercise, I didn't even leave my apartment. So it's very, it's very COVID helpful, especially when the weather was cold and everything and we couldn't leave. Even in your own apartment, you can find a million different characters. So, and, but even beyond finding characters, there is like another way that you can create your own characters, which goes even deeper. If you start paying attention to your world and what you find is shapes. So there is millions of like characters, but also there's like gazillions of shapes. Now Danny is going to play <laughs> another video about how to find little shapes in the world too. Like that's like a, that's a shape, for example, the little planter. It was a character, but it could also be a little shape. You can look in the fabric and you can find little shapes in the fabric and in the pattern in your clothes. This little pen cap. I'm really obsessed about that shape. I really like it. This is a drawer that I have and look, it already looks like a mouth. That one is a classic because it already has a face in it. Like it's so exciting to see. But even a leaf, if you see that shape, they can be such expressive shapes. And as I say, it's same thing. Look at this chest drawer. Like in this very one, in one object, you can find so many different shapes. From here, you can make so many characters from one thing. So going back to all of this, you can, if you look around right now, just look around your room, just look around through your, look through your window, look at your car, look at your clothes, and you're going to find so many different shapes. And that's where the drawing lesson comes from. And I'm very excited to show you guys because this is going to be really fun. <laughs> yes. Amazing. So Annie's recorded for us uh, an awesome uh, drawing lesson, a demonstration of how to take those two ideas, essentially how to take 
um, looking for shapes around you and then how to transform them into characters. While you're watching this demonstration, um, I'll be available in the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. If you do want to ask questions, feel free to do so. If I can respond, I'll type and if not, we'll answer them um, afterwards when we come back. So let us watch Annie's awesome demonstration of creating characters from shapes. I'm super excited. I might have to grab a piece of paper and do this while you're teaching it at the same time. You should, you should. Right? Yeah. Why not? Why not? I, I gotta post it. Yeah, yeah, do it, clearly. <laughs> Amazing. Hello, my friend. So what I'm gonna show you right now, it's how to do this exercise that is really fun and is one of my favorite things to do with my children when I'm teaching at the AGO. All those shapes that I just showed you how to hunt for is what I call it, hunting for shapes. Now I'm gonna put them here on paper so you can see them. So this is, for example, that pen cap that we saw, the drawer handle. This is from the socket the electricity socket uh, same thing is from there the screw from the socket this is a leaf and this is another kind of leaf that i saw somewhere it's kind of similar but more rounded this shape i got it from a chest drawer but it almost looks like a pair of underwear. You can, you can even add shapes that you remember, like a star, for example, a heart, circle, triangle, any shapes. Just think about any shapes that you have seen in the world. The world is overflowing with shapes. There's another shape that is similar to this, but it's flat on the side, so it's almost like a slice of bread. Then there's another kind of screw that it has like a X inside of it or a cross depending how you're looking at it and I found this shape in a wheel of my shopping cart and this is another planter that I have another of the leaves that we saw that I find so pretty and a different shape of planter. Look at all the shapes that we found. It's amazing. I'm telling you, the world is overflowing with shapes. It's, they're everywhere. They're absolutely everywhere. There are thousands and millions. And in a minute, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with all of this. Flower, that one that we saw in the fabric. So once you have a bunch of shapes, now we're gonna play with them. What I wanna show you, a really fun thing, is that if you see any two shapes, any two shapes together, repeated, you're gonna see what happens. Choose one. Okay, this one, I agree with you. So, check it out. If you make it twice, something happens in your brain that immediately they turn into eyes. You notice that? So then you can just add a nose from there. Look at this. Do you think this will be a fun mouth? Look at it. Whoa, it already looks like a character. You, you can see it happening. Let's use this planter as a head. And you know you're gonna have fun. You can even put the little plants on top of it. just because it looks cute. <laughs> right? I don't know if cute is a word. It looks kind of grumpy, this guy. And you can find any kind of thing that you would like to use for the body. Like for example, this one. This would look interesting. Check it out. This is the pen cap. And then you can use anything you like for the legs. Like these little sticks. And anything you like for the shoes. You can just draw them whichever you like to do and what i tell my students 
it's right now my friend oh you want to put like a decoration maybe a star what you have done here what we have done here is we have created a character that it has never existed in this world look at this i'm gonna put hard hands this guy has never existed in this world and that's what is so exciting about it because it came from your own world when you encounter the world and then you mix it with your own imagination then it comes to it comes to life in a way that it will have never happened for another person because not everybody lives in the same way not everybody thinks the same things and I tell my kids too, my students, that something I really like to play with is eyebrows. So think about eyebrows. If they're like this, then they look like nice. If they are slanted in the other direction, they look angry. And if they are like arches, they look really surprised. So you can play with this. Would you like it to be mean or angry? You use this one. Oops. <laughs> If you want it to be happy or like tender, you use these ones. Or if you want it to be surprised, you use this one. I think this guy. Let's make this guy surprised. Whoa! And then you can add teeth. So, anyways, this is an exercise that you can do in your house and have lots of fun. Just looking at shapes that you can find in your house. You can do all kind of all kinds of experiments. Let's do another one. And let's use these same shapes just so you can see. Let's use two heads right now. Let's use this underwear shape that I found in the chest. And which eyes do you think? Maybe the screws. The screws look cool. Because look, it's gonna give an expression already. It just looks really robotic. If you think like a mouth, like a nose, maybe this one. And what about this one? This one looks really sweet for a mouth. And you have invented this little guy, which is really cute. What about this for a hair? This leaf. I think that looks really fun. And what about this one for a body? Immediately, you can see that there is a guy right there. And you, my friend, can find all kinds of characters out in the world, out in your world. All of these shapes, they came just from my apartment. If you go in the street and you, you want to find anything, you can find any kind of things outside, any kind of leaves, any kind of wheels and lunch boxes and hats and shoes and shirts and windows everything has a different shape even letters have different shapes and they're like they're really fun to play with like this is already a head these ones check it out already their eyes these ones and everything has a different expression too which is really really fun this one will be really fun let's try it so Let's just try just for fun. How would a character look with X's on her eyes? And what about a nose? What about this one? It's a weird nose. And we like weird stuff, don't we? So, for a mouth, <laughs> let's do maybe this one. Because it's very strange. Whoa, and that was a very surprised character. I also like playing with black because black gives a lot of impact to whatever that you're seeing. It just gives depth to your characters and to your drawings and it makes them more eye-catching, I find. See? You can add teeth too. Teeth add like an expression of... I don't know, they make them look like a little bit like more stinkerish. So what about eyebrows? What about triangles for eyebrows? Let's try them. And see, you know what this makes me think of? Maybe it's a cat. 
and not only a cat it's a really really strange cat so you can add this and suddenly it turned into a cat so we found a cat here on a character and you see how easy this is and you can do it in your house with anything that you can find in your own place in your own house you don't even need to leave your apartment and yes i hope you have fun hunting for shapes in your house and this is just a little example have fun find everything that you can find in your house and do your own experiments and you can even send shapes that you find to your friends and remember just to have lots of fun because that's the main that's the main component just play 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 with your shapes and that's gonna give you even more possibilities because when your mind is open to playing when you're playing is your mind goes faster i find that if you're like all grumpy or whatever when you're just like trying to make things work and thinking like oh people are not gonna like them then your mind gets stuck i find and check it out just because i found i just wanna try this so <laughs> just bear with me my friends we're gonna use this leaf again so dear leaf what are you gonna give us today how are you gonna look and i wanna use this this is gonna be a character inspired by nature so it's a leaf that is gonna have flower eyes what about that what eyebrows should be making me surprised yay and let's just give it this happy mouth let's just give it a little happy mouth <laughs> and just like a maybe what nose do you think maybe this one doesn't it look cute you can make these other kind of teeth you know that you just make a line in the center and then you just make more lines like that <laughs> And here, my friends, you have created a brand new character. What about this for a body? What about this guy for a body? Let's try it. Let's give it like a little bit of a necklace. What about... Yes. And just like... <laughs> it would chewed over there. You know, when you make a mistake, you can play with that mistake. What I will do right here, for example, sometimes I do some kind of texture. Like lines or any kind of pattern that you like. Another thing I do is a checker pattern or squares or whatever that seems fun to you. Playing with art is just so important <laughs> because honestly, art is playing with your imagination and then you can just like add little feet little arms <laughs> there the birth of a couple of characters this one is missing something you know what i'm gonna give it like a color maybe buttons Maybe underwear. Maybe black and white underwear. What do you think? I hope you can do this at home. It's gonna be really, really, really fun. I promise. Hmm. Try this at home. It's really, really fun. We're back. Mm -hmm. That was awesome, Annie. That was so much fun. I know oh. I was trying to draw and keep up at home too. Annie is a professional. <laughs> she does this all the time professionally. There's no expectation that you're going to keep up and do it the same way that she does it. But that, yeah. that was brilliant. That was super, super fun to watch. And I do hope people try it um, at home. And I know you wanted to show us a little bit about what to do with your drawings after you've created your character. Yeah, and I also wanted to respond to some of the nice, sweet friends that they were writing, like, I cannot keep up. Oh my goodness, you're going so fast. 
just like don't she's worry a she's a professional I, <laughs> no I, I, I it's, it's not even that like i've been doing it for so long but also i think maybe i was doing it fast for the lesson but if you wanna tiana like and they replay it again after after this is done right absolutely like, we're gonna put it on the web page for the uh ago make summer edition we'll probably also post it on facebook as well so just stay tuned mm -hmm. you'll be able to see it after for sure that's good yes and, and what i was saying this is the lesson that i give like my students when i'm giving the lesson and then then after i tell them then they go and do it themselves it's not like you have to like do it at the same time so don't worry my friends you can do it like at your own pace and you can have fun and as i say this is in my apartment you can go around and see different shapes in the world you're not gonna believe how many they are and you can create so many different things and yes, another way of playing that is really, really important in this world, because I, I am a cartoonist, I'm not an illustrator. So another way of playing is playing with your own thoughts. And that's even, that's another step. And that's so important because you can then start making your characters speak for you. And when you're making cartoon, cartooning is really powerful because you have like this little cute character saying something when in reality is you saying these things <laughs> so basically so sneaky yeah, <laughs> sneaky things because sometimes they're more convincing but you have you something that is really really important for me is just like to be quiet sometimes and then just listen to my thoughts i'm very used to silence so i'm very used to not hearing the radio or not hearing tv and just taking walks or just like being in my bed or being in the bathtub just like listening to my thoughts and then you start hearing all these crazy things that come to your mind if you see some of my cartoons they're like the craziest thoughts but I don't have more thoughts that you have. I don't have more thoughts that any of the people seeing this had. Like, we're all the same. You, Tiana, are thinking things. Like, our friends at home are thinking things right now at this point. Like, all of us are thinking. The only difference is that if you catch it and then you put it in a cartoon, then you're a cartoonist. That's, like, that's all that separates you from anything. And, and then, yeah, it's another way of playing with something. Play with your thoughts. There is, like, some, or not even... It cannot even be only thoughts. Sometimes it will be something that somebody told you that it was really helpful. Like if your grandma told you like, oh, you're like the most special person in the world for me. That's a thought that keeps coming back to you. And then if you draw it in a cartoon or even you draw your grandma, it's a way to capture it. And then sometimes there's thoughts that are hurtful. Like they're just like, oh, you're a terrible person. And then if you draw a character saying that, you can see the thought from the outside and you're like, this is not true. Like, this is a thought that came to another person. It's, as, it's the same as thoughts come to me. Thoughts come to other people. And when they tell you, you decide if you're going to agree with that thought or not. But even putting them on paper, it really helps you see thoughts from another perspective. It's the, the playing with your thoughts is like almost like therapy. <laughs> oh, like, seriously, it's really, really another level of like fun but also it helps you realize what things you want to believe and what things you don't want to believe and what things are fun or what things are just your ideas. And then sometimes you see thoughts that you have that are not helpful either, that you're like, why are I thinking this crazy thing? So yes, that's another level. So what we were thinking about is like, yes, if I made this little character, for example, this little character, I made this bunny. Super sweet. <laughs> and if you think, Tiana, what do you think this bunny could say? What are you thinking right now? Okay. Would your, mind, would your mind calm and just like quiet? What would you like to say? Oh, there's so many things, Annie. It would be a book. No, if I had to say one <laughs> thing right now, I think it would be, uh, I think it would be, I need a hug. I think I would Aww. say I need a hug. Yeah. Yes. Don't we all? Uh, yeah, so, right? So, yes, exactly. So look, this is the bunny. And then I'm going to try to not make any mistakes, even though <laughs> I'm in front of all you guys. I need a hug. I never do anything in front of people. <laughs> this is a little bit nerve wracking, but. Oh, lovely. I need a hug. And so now. The bunny is speaking for you and your yeah, behalf. It's that simple. Like I, 
I don't know why I always think of drawing like a cartoon as being a bigger and more complicated thing, but mm -hmm. it's that simple. Like you can just grab a thought that's in your head and like yes. to the character and the character exactly. can hit and you're off, mm -hmm. like you're going. That's amazing. Exactly. And, and we were talking about how, for, for example, right now with COVID, what we will do is find a thought that it has been really helping us, like the billboard that I showed you, we will meet again. That it's a thought that has been really, I mean, like brain for that, we will meet again. And this, I made this illustration and then it made it to billboards and everything because I think it connects with people. And what we could do right now in a smaller scale is just put them in our windows. What is a message that we would like to transmit to our fellow humans because we all need support right now and anything that we can do to ping out into the world, like some log. Same thing, if you look at my work, it's about like sending love into the world. And that's, to me, that's what art is and that's what life is about. Everything is love, like pinging, doing, like creating, writing is love, putting love out into the world and then you sending it. And this kind of uh, cartooning or anything that you can create is love out like that mountain that we made in the ago that it was called this mountain loves you we wanted to make a beautiful art piece but it will be it wouldn't be as meaningful to me if it didn't send love to everybody who saw it so that's really important for me and well it you, you may have different inclinations as an artist but if you wanted to do something for the world you could put something in the window and just like send a message for our fellow humans like support message and that would be great <laughs> That made the world better. Yeah. I love it. Well, I will say, Annie, your energy is completely infectious. You obviously put lots of love out into the world. And yes. I know whenever I speak with you or we get to interact, I always walk away feeling charged and excited and ready to make art. So um, this was amazing that you could come and you could share this with us today. I'm so, so happy you could do that. Um, before we sort of wrap up and go, is there anything else you want to share with people? Anything else you want to say? Yes, I wanted to show you just like I'm working in my second book right now that is called, it's about, so this is the next step. It's about being alive. And it's called, it talks about the magic of being alive. What is this magical thing to be alive? We don't know what it is really. So I want to just share the first time that it has been shared in the whole world. Let me see. Okay, here it is. I mean, can you see it? Are you seeing it? So right there, that's Spark. And celebrate the magic of being alive. So Spark is about, yeah, like it's a, basically a poem about being alive. What does it all mean? Where did we come from? Like how many people have been born before us like this moment what can we do with this moment so this book is gonna come next spring through in new york same thing little brown so i hope that you're gonna see it and this is like some of the artwork that i've been making for it you can see it behind me all the watercolors are right there and then a picture and then this little guy says i need some human connection right now can you please connect with me and this is my social media. So <laughs> you can connect with me through this is my Instagram, is Annie like at slash Annie Castillo and Facebook Imaginary Annie. And yes, that's my name. And I really hope we can connect somewhere. It will be great to see you out in the real world. And just remember to keep creating art because that's playing with life. Like life is play and life is love. And like it's all mixed up. And I think. That's the way we can like live really happy lives if we can keep playing forever. Yes. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you, Annie. So just a quick nod to everybody. Um, remember to check out Annie's book, Ping. It is really incredible, incredible book. Um, it's available pretty much everywhere online, but it is definitely at local bookstores near you. Um, yes. Also check out oh, and there we go. <laughs> there it is. Got my copy, Got my copy too. <laughs> Always, everywhere I go. Um, yeah. <laughs> the next four weeks of uh, AGO Make Summer Edition programming, it's super fun. We've got great themes coming up. Our next week is themed uh, found. We also have uh, opposites. We also have land coming up. And we've got great um, other artists joining us for these conversations, including special guests like the Toronto Zoo, which will be super fun, and the Ontario Science Centre. So uh, when you make art in this sort of uh, virtual world, make sure to share it with us at the hashtag AGO Make. Yes, please, um, please. 
we want to see it. Annie wants to see what you make for sure. Um, and everything you do, do a hashtag will show up on our website. We have a gallery there that will populate with all your pieces. So please be part of our gallery uh, online. And then we will have children and youth courses uh, this fall. So stay tuned for more uh, information about that. So for now, I'll just say have fun, play, draw, enjoy, put your love out into the world, as Annie says, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Diana. Thank you, Danny, in the background over there. <laughs> Thank you so much. See you soon. Bye.